Alright, I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea what the hell is going on here. This is a video game, obviously, and it was sent to us by our good pal Gunwild from New York. But other than that, I mean, I have no idea. I don't watch anime, so all this spiky hair is actually kind of making me paranoid, and the perspective is just confusing the hell out of me. This is, I'm gonna give it my best shot here, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkachi 3 for the PlayStation 2. Sorry, I'm not fluent in Japanese or crazy anime fighting games. Now here's what I do know, Dragon Ball Z Buda Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is a 2007 release for both the Wii and PS2. Now during that time, a lot of publishers had their games co-developed for those two platforms. A smart business move that, unfortunately, also happened to be a sign of underdevelopment to come for Nintendo's new platform. But this is the PS2 version of Buda... Budokai Teriyaki 3, and although it doesn't have the online component of its Wii counterpart, this interesting fighter is otherwise the same game on Sony's platform as well. I call this an interesting fighter because it doesn't play like a typical fighting game would. Instead of fighting face to face within a small 2D level, you're actually thrown into a huge 3D stage against an enemy who looks like he's 100 yards away. The gap closes pretty quickly though, because you have the gift of flight in this game. And that's what makes Basketball Tank Itchy 3 so interesting. You're flying all over the place and engaging in flashy aerial combat like the freaking Rocketeer. It's a pretty neat concept for a fighting game, although I have no idea if it's something from the Dragon Ball Z show or whatever. Obviously, I'm more familiar with Jennifer Connelly movies. There's a dramatic quality to the gameplay thanks to the staging. It's like you're in a gunfight from the Old West, only with lasers that, like, shoot out of your hands. And far too much moose. I mean, how do you guys watch this stuff? O honestly, I'm asking. How do you do it? Now, despite the crazy appearance and perspective, the combat is actually pretty simple. You really only use two buttons, and aside from some evasive maneuvers and counterattacks, this is basically an ordinary button masher. The real draw to, to Boots, Kites, and Ten Kitchens 3 is its obscene amount of characters. The roster features more than 150 Dragon Ball Z characters, which is more than even the most diehard fan would ever need in a Dragon Ball Z fighter. There's also a slew of gameplay modes too, there are tournaments, a story mode, plenty of options to keep all those characters in fighting shape, and in lieu of Wii's online component, the PS2 version has something called Disk Fusion. If you insert old titles from the series into your PS2, it actually unlocks new content in this one. Of course, that's more an interesting technical trick than a meaningful addition, but it's kinda cool nonetheless. Overall, the third game in this series is definitely an improvement in some areas, specifically presentation. The gameplay is great, it feels balanced, and if I were a Dragon Ball Z fan, I'd probably flip out over the sheer amount of content this game offers. There's way more stuff here than I'd ever be interested in seeing. But if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, and for some reason have never played this game, you should. This series has produced some of the best anime fighters on the market, and although I didn't understand what was going on, even I had a good time with Dragon Ball Z Budu Budokai Tenkaichi 3.